Well, hello there, welcome in. As I was recording videos for my new course, Stream Design Lab, I realized that they've added something new to Canva that makes making transitions so ridiculously easy. So if you followed any of my previous transition videos, this is gonna be a great video for you. This is going to make your life so much easier. With that said, let's get into it. Wait, cut. Dr. Hills, did you just say new course? Exactly. See, starting a stream is easy, but standing out, that's the hard part. Most streamers know how to fire up OBS, slap on a random overlay, and hope that the gameplay will do the talking. But your stream isn't just content, it's a brand. And if you want people to remember you, follow you, come back, you've got to look the part. And that's why I created Stream Design Lab. It's a step-by-step -step course that helps you build your full stream brand using Canva. No Photoshop or expensive software, just simple tools that anyone can use. By the end, you'll be able to make a strong brand, build a foundation, create your logo, overlays, alerts, panels, emotes, social content, literally everything you'll ever need in your stream in Canva. So if you're ready to make your stream look professional and stand out amongst the crowd, then check out Stream Design Lab. I'll have the link down in the description. So now we're diving into this video. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to canva.com. I will go ahead and put it out there. You will need a Canva Pro account. If you don't have one, I have a link down below that'll get you 30 days of Canva Pro. Uh, with that said, let's go ahead and dive in. On Canva, we're gonna go right here to video. Uh, we're gonna clear, create a 1920 by 1080 video. I guess this changes if you're making it for say TikTok and you, then you'd wanna make it at a 1080 by 1920. But for us, we're making it for Twitch or YouTube or you know, wherever else we stream that's in landscape. Now in this, I'm gonna be using probably my own Dr. Heels branding, but I would assume you have your own branding that you're able to use here. Uh, in the course that I just did, we used the Nova Plays branding, which was a fake brand that we kind of built and that I gave it away at the end of the course. And that was really cool because that branding worked out well. But for this, we'll try to use our Dr. Hills branding. So ultimately, the first thing we want to do is we want to be able to have something move in, cover the entire screen, and then kind of move back out. That's how the transition works is like in that moment when the entire stream is covered, then in that one moment when that entire screen is covered, then, you know, you change from, you know, full camera to game camera, and then whenever it goes away, you're at your new scene. So I'm trying to think here how we're gonna do the Dr. Hills one. Uh, I think what I wanna do, I'm gonna go to elements here, I'm gonna go to see all. I wanna have maybe a, a circle like this start out, and basically like it's gonna kind of start small like this, and then it's gonna come fill the entire screen and then whoop, right back out like that. And then we'll see if we can get it to change in the midst of that. The animation part isn't necessarily the point of the tutorial, simply because I've done so many videos on that. The point of the tutorial is gonna come here in a little while, but we will work on the animation. I'm gonna do a frame here, just so I can put something in the middle of it because I seen a like topographical element that I thought would work well. Let's see. Oh, it's there. I was like, is anything supposed to be happening? I see nothing. Let's go to edit, go to adjust, try to bring out our contrast, maybe like that, bump our brightness a little bit. Now is something happening. That looks good, I think. We'll bring our whites up a little bit more, blacks down a little, or no, the other way. Bring our whites all the way up. Maybe bring highlights up a little more. Just like that. Okay, all right, that's gonna work. And now we have this that we can kind of animate, right? For there, we're gonna leave that right there. I'm gonna take this scene and I wanna drag it down to about half a second, maybe even less. Actually, now that I have this like this, I think I want to make a couple changes to it. One, I like this one. This is a whole lot more vibrant. And I think that we can go into edit, adjust, and maybe get the colors closer to like a purple. Maybe not. We should be able to go in our filters and find a filter that will get us. Oh yeah, there we go. Perfect, look at that. And I could adjust the intensity. We wanted all the purple, right? That looks pretty good, I think. Or, hold on, ooh, wait a minute. Let's try this one. Ooh, okay, I like this one, I think. I think we're gonna go with this one. And so now I'm just gonna put that in there. And so basically, you know, it's gonna be moving around just like that. And now that I have this here, I wanna go ahead and build out this shape and all the stuff in it. So I wanna go to brand and I'm gonna choose my Dr. Heels brand that evidently I've never built in here. Fantastic, okay, I thought I had. So we are going to do this a little bit different. We are gonna to go to our uploads and I'm gonna see if I have my Dr. Hills logo here. There we go, that's the one I wanted. Nope, okay. All right, now that I have it here, I'm gonna size it down like this. I'm gonna drag it over and I'm gonna hold down control and that's gonna make it not go into this. Something like that I think looks pretty good. We may even do like edit and I could put a shadow on it. 
like that to give it a little bit more separation. We're gonna alt, make it a little larger. Uh, I'm gonna grab both of these, position, middle, center, make sure we're centered. That uh, doesn't look centered to me, so I'm gonna move it a little, holding down control and shift so it stays on this line right there. Okay, now I just wanna group these, and, and pretty much what I'm gonna want to happen is I want it to start pretty much not even there, right? I'm gonna go ahead and drop this one down to about half a second. Ultimately, I don't want my transition to be any longer than about three seconds. So, and drop that down, I'm gonna click and make sure I'm down on thumbnail and then I can zoom in. Uh, I think something like that works well. Uh, then I can duplicate this. And then on this one, I can size this up like this. That might be as far as I can go here, we'll see. Then I can select it, I can click my transition here, and I can go to match and move, which as you're gonna see, it is going to make it grow like that, okay? So let's over on this one, let's go ahead and this page. Let's see what happens if we take it all the way to where it fills up the screen. This, I just want it to be right to the edges, like that. Yeah, that was pretty good. Okay, so what I want is I want the transition to be a little longer. And I can't do that without making this one a little bit longer, which I don't want to do, but I'm going to have to. There we go. That looks pretty good. Okay, and then from here, I'm pretty much going to duplicate this page right here. Control D to duplicate it. I'm going to move it over here to the other side, just like this. And I'm gonna use that match and move again. So the way the match and move works is pretty much it says, if I have the same thing in both scenes and it's here in this scene and it's here in this scene, basically in the transition, it's going to go from, you know, wherever it is in scene A to wherever it is in scene B. So if I were to move it like scene A, I had it at the lower part of the screen and scene B is at the top part of the screen, the transition is gonna make it go across to like where, you know, it's gonna make it match and move. Right, so now that we have that, let's see. Yeah, that works really well. The only thing I wish is on this screen, I wish it wasn't even that big. I wish I could make it smaller. Let's see if I can. I don't think I can. Never mind, I did. I can, I am, right? But I do think that is as small as I can make it, but it's just gonna be a dot on the page, right? Perfect, and so I wanna do the same with this one. There we go. And so now this transition is less than two seconds and watch. And that's the whole transition. That is actually really good. Now let me show you the cool new feature that Canva has added in. And I could do plenty of other things to play with it, make it whatever I want, but that, that was just wanted to do a simple animated transition. The match and move is such a powerful plugin, but let me show you how to download this. So before when we did this, I would have to come in and I would have to make this background a bright green. You've watched my videos, you know how this goes. This bright green, and then I'd have to bring it in. I would have to export it as a GIF, and then I would have to take it to another piece of software to remove that that background, I'd have to re-download it as a GIF. And then finally, if it removed all the background pieces, I would have to go in and upload that to OBS. That was the whole process. Okay, now all I have to do, share, download, change it to a GIF, choose transparent background. My friends, we can now export with transparent background. Hold on, just in case. This is exciting. I've been asking for this for a long time, all right? And I'm, I'm on the Canva team. Like I'm a verified expert for the Canva peeps, right? And we finally have my friends look at it right there in all of its glory and beauty. We have transparent background exporting for video. Let's go. We're gonna hit download. As that's opening, I'm gonna open up my OBS uh, tutorial. This is my tutorial OBS. And you're thinking, wow, those overlays look really good, Jeff. Um, those look fantastic. Well, hey, thank you for that. This is actually what we made in the course. So if you like this and you like everything you're seeing, this is what we make in the course, in the Stream Design Labs course. I walk you through every step of this branding, including this transition you're seeing on screen right now. Anyway, that was a shameless plug. I apologize for that. Let's go ahead and see if the transition we just made is done. And I'll show you how to set it up. Perfect. It is done. One of the things I want to do here is I moved my timer here because I want to see the time that the page is fully covered. And so if I, if I grab this, you can see 0.7 seconds. It is fully covered. Okay. All right. So that is good to know. So at about 700 milliseconds is when we're going to time our transition to happen. So uh, we downloaded it. I clearly did not rename it. So it's just untitled design. I'm okay with that. I'm going to go right here under my scene transitions. If you don't see this, you can go, I think it's under docs, uh, scene transition to get access to this. Press plus. We're gonna go with a Stinger transition. We'll name it, you know, DH, whatever, transition, right? Go find that video file for me. It's untitled one, you know, uh, just like this. I want it to, the transition point to be at a time. And again, we said it was 0.7, so it's gonna be 700 milliseconds. I don't need a track mat. I don't need anything else. And now that that's in, I should just be able to transition just like that. And it's in and it's out. The dot bothers me, I'll be honest. I would like to get rid of the dot, but overall, I think it looks really good. And it is fully, 
functional and it is fully transparent. That is just such a neat feature that has been added. So with that said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you subscribe to this channel. If you want access to the full course where we create all this, I'll have everything linked down below, but I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.